a different website with only those products which he may buy okay so this will be the agenda for the session so first i will talk about what is analytics and why now suddenly uh, every, the world has gone crazy for analytics and artificial intelligence how do we derive value from business analytics why should we as students care then i'll start with a few basic concepts a few machine learning techniques and then uh, like the question answer round but you guys are free to ask me questions anytime so anytime you are not clear with anything so whatever i will be covering uh, is is very basics okay so there is there is no mathematics involved it will be very basic very high level but still if you have any questions please please uh, write that question on the chat box and immediately i'll reply or you can raise a hand so uh, i'm sure you are familiar so on, on the right hand side you would see a, a few options right so you would see a raise hand option also there so please raise your hand whenever you have a question or you can directly write it down in the chat box okay and i hope my voice is clear to everybody i am clearly audible and you are able to follow along right guys okay so please respond when i ask something because this is online class and uh, i do need a response to know that i am clear or not okay okay great so uh, my introduction was done so would want a quick uh, high level survey of the participants here so how many of you are from bangalore i guess most of you will be from bangalore because i had only advertised this in bangalore meetups and not elsewhere okay uh, okay let me ask it this way is there anybody who is not from bangalore so we have a few people from mysore is there anybody from uh, not from bangalore okay so we just have mysore and bangalore okay great yeah funny happy kannada jyotsava to everybody <laughs> of course okay so let us start now so first of all the definition of analytics okay so what is data analytics so we have heard a lot about this but what is data analytics? so i'm sure all of you would understand that data analytics is something dealing with data so we take the data and we derive some insights from the data right so but to put it in a definition so this is the definition of analytics and uh, you see the keywords are highlighted in red so the science of using data to build models that lead to better decisions and eventually help us derive value okay so this is the keyword and this is uh, one of the best definitions i found for uh, analytics so what do we do in analytics we basically take the data so we we take the past history data and we build math mathematical models okay so the models that we build are mathematical models or you can also call them statistical models okay and we apply these models on the data and these models help us take better decisions and then obviously if we take better decisions we add value to the organization to the company or to the institution wherever we are working so this is one of the best definitions of analytics okay now people also ask me who is a data scientist so uh, often often people confuse a data scientist with a software engineer or with a data analyst so a data scientist is uh, so this is again uh, 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 interesting definition of data scientist so a data scientist is someone who is better at statistics than most software engineers and better at software engineering than most statisticians okay so this this might be confusing at first but basically what this means is a data scientist should know statistics as well as a little bit of coding okay so he should know more statistics than a software engineer and he should know more coding than a statistician so at statisticians only know statistics they do not know much of coding IT engineers software engineers they know only coding they do not know statistics so when you merge the two basically that is that is the world of data science 
Okay, so that is also clearly shown in this in this Venn diagram that you see So this diagram also shows so you see you can see here the hacking skills. So hacking skill is nothing but The coding part. So this is the coding part How good coding you can do then you have the maths and statistics skills so of course maths is very important because as I highlighted the models that we built will be mathematical models and statistical models so maths and stats is very important okay and then here comes the substantive expertise so this is nothing but the domain knowledge this is the business understanding that you have because obviously if 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 you are given a, a piece of data uh, um, and you do not understand the data you do not have any business understanding of the data then you could not do much about it right so you should have a very good understanding of your data as well so that is where your domain expertise comes into picture okay and a lot of people ask me who are not in analytics who have been working in some other domain and they ask me how do we move into analytics so uh, the the best part of analytics is you don't need to be a computer science student to move into analytics you could move it from anywhere because the domain experience whichever domain you are working in you would have the domain experience all you need to do is learn the coding part or the maths and stats parts so maths and stats parts i think everybody has learned it the same high school mathematics or graduation mathematics is is learned by everybody you might have forgotten that so you need to refresh on the maths and stats and if you don't know coding you have to brush up on the coding part the domain expertise you would already have in whatever domain you are working so if you are working in retail domain you would only understand you would already understand the words like uh, which are used in uh, the jargons which are used in the retail industry if you work in uh, let's say uh, if you are a HR if you work as a HR you would understand better the terms that are that involved in the recruitment process and uh, in, a, in a appraisal process so you already have the domain knowledge you just need the maths and stats part and the coding part okay and and the intersection of all the three which you see in the middle this is the data science so this part is the data science which is the intersection of the three Okay, so Gokul asks what is the best programming language for data science? Yes, Gokul we will come to that So we will as we proceed in this uh, uh, PPT we will come to that question as well Okay, so uh, uh, That is also highlighted by this uh, so whatever data science is whatever data scientists should know is also highlighted by this word cloud So a figure like this is known as a word cloud. So this is a very uh, easy task for a data scientist It is very easy to generate clouds like this. Okay, so uh, These you can see a few of the languages here Gokul so you, you can see Python R says here and on the other concepts statistics predictive analytics maths business analytics so all these together they form data sciences okay so let us move ahead okay so this is nothing but whatever i talked about so why why when i talked about why anybody can become a data scientist and and uh, this this is what this this slide also mentions the same so there can be people with diverse background uh, who end up working on data science problems okay because of the reasons that i already talked about Okay, now you may ask which concepts in mathematics Okay, so Bharat Raj asks is data big data mandatory for data sounds uh, data science uh, No, Bharat Raj uh, to give you a straight answer. No, it is not necessary But obviously if you know it it helps so we will come to that. So we will come to that question later. Okay, we are just uh, warming up basically Okay, so uh, if, if, so I talked about the importance of maths and statistics uh, for data science, right? So which concepts in maths is necessary? So here uh, here this slide basically tells you that so the probability theory is important Why probability theory is important because uh, the models that we build uh, in the previous slide We saw that we build mathematical models. So the mathematical models that we build always help us take a better decision in the future so we cannot uh, basically predict the future with 100% accuracy so we play with probabilities okay so we we say that something will happen in the future with a particular probability okay so for example let's say uh, a bank wants to know or, or let's say a telecom company wants to know that which of its customers will no longer be customers they, they will basically leave to another telecom operator 
so if a telecom uh, so if you can build a model to do that the model will basically predict that customers xyz will leave the company with this much probability okay so that is where the probability theory comes into picture okay then we also have linear algebra so linear algebra if you guys remember this is the part of mathematics which deals with the equation of lines the equation of polynomial functions and all those things so parabola straight line plane so this is important because uh, the models that we talked about we build mathematical models so they will be based on the linear algebra concept okay so based on linear algebra concept linear algebra will basically help us to build the best model we will see that later in details statistics of course we need statistics so what is statistics if i have to tell you statistics is the is the science of uh, studying a population uh, with uh, like study statistics is the science of studying a sample and then inferring for a population okay so let's say if i have to ask you what is the average salary of a 30 year old guy in bangalore okay so now this can be a very tough question because you cannot go and ask everybody who is 30 years old that what is your uh, income but what we can do is uh, to answer this question we can ask only a few people so let's say let's say there are 10 lakh people in bangalore who are 30 years old so we cannot go and ask every 10 lakh people what is your income so what we do we select a sample out of it a sample means maybe we will select some hundred people okay and there are different ways how you can select the best sample so you you cannot go and ask everybody who works at microsoft and who is 30 years old what is their income because obviously that wouldn't represent all the 10 lakh people's income so the sample should represent the population it should not be a biased sample so there are different ways to select the best sample but this this entire study that we do we study a sample and then we find out something and then we infer for the population we say that the population also would follow the same with some percentage error okay so that is that is the statistics part okay and and calculus of course we need calculus because later you will see that the, the models that we are building so the models also would not be 100 percent correct they will have some errors okay so to build a best model we will use calculus we will use differential calculus especially to find out the best particular model okay or, or the point where the model is the best okay so we basically minimize the error so if you remember a little bit of calculus if we have to minimize let's say y how do we minimize a function y we take the differentiation of it right we will just minimize it and we will differentiate it and we will make it zero and then we will solve for y right this is what we used to do remember this is high school mathematics so these concepts come from calculus so calculus also is necessary okay uh, now now comes the computer science part so this this discuss the maths and stats part the next the next point discusses the computer science part of it so you should if you have a good understanding of computer architecture how the data is stored in the computer how the data is processed or if you also have good experience in building algorithms so that always helps in data science okay but this is not mandatory but obviously if you know this you will be you will be a better data scientist okay and and programming proficiency okay so programming why is it required because of course the mathematical models that we build will not, will not build them on paper we'll build them using a computer that is why we need to be proficient in at least one language okay and we'll talk about the different languages used and and the advantages of each and of course we need the right aptitude and the attitude so data science is a evolving uh, concept a evolving subject okay a lot of new algorithms a lot of new studies are being done and uh, for example deep learning and uh, ai so this is this is a evolving subject so a lot of new things are coming up so you need to have the right attitude to learn new things okay there will never be a moment in data science where you can say that okay i have learned everything and now i can relax you will have to continuously learn okay okay so let us move to the next slide so any, any questions so far guys okay so Hemant says uh, can we use Java yes Hemant we can use Java I'll, I'll come to the coding part later okay
okay so now uh, why why the world has suddenly gone crazy for analytics okay so what is the reason for this so this this probably uh, now you have seen uh, people doing analytics for uh, quite some time now so this slide was prepared a year ago when i started teaching basically so uh, now it's it's no uh, not a not a big deal that uh, people are working in analytics but this was true a year ago so uh, why why the sudden uh, outburst of uh, analytics and and uh, training institutes which are providing analytics so because this is because uh, so there has been a sudden explosion of data okay so uh, 10 years ago or uh, uh, not five years i would say but 10 years ago the amount of data available to the companies or to organizations or to governments was not enough okay because one major uh, portion of uh, doing a good data science work is having a lot of data okay Uh, yes, Surya, I will answer your question. What if you are new to coding also? Uh, of course, I have seen a lot of people who are new to coding because coding you don't just need coding Okay, and the coding required for analytics is minimal Minimal coding is required for analytics. Okay, but of, of course if you know a lot of coding it will help you but but still uh, minimal coding is required for analytics so uh, if, if because maths and the statistics parts uh, will will be like maths everybody has done the same amount of maths statistics uh, most of us have not done statistics because of very few people take statistics courses so uh, maths and stats is common to everybody the domain understanding you whichever domain you are working in you would already know that better than anybody else so the only portion you have to focus is on the analytics uh, algorithms and on the coding part of it and the algorithms are already built and the best part is uh, these software languages nowadays they come up with libraries you just install the library and the the basically the coding required to use any algorithm will be very minimal just one line two line of code that is what you have to remember and they are very intuitive you don't have to memorize the codes uh, they are very intuitive it will automatically come to you we will see that we will see a sample code and see how how that works out okay Okay, so uh, why now I was talking so uh, because uh, the amount of data available has uh, like increased manifold in the past few years. So if you know that every year the amount of data uh, is, is doubling. So whatever data the world had till 2015, it doubled in just one year in 2016. Okay, so that is that is the proportional increase in data we are seeing every year now. The other reason is the, the hardware software are becoming cheaper and uh, easily available. So if, if you remember guys when uh, 10 years ago uh, the pen drives that we had or the hard disk that we had or even even to buy a computer of a good configuration. Let's say to buy a one terabyte computer. You would have to pay a lot of money. Okay, it was not easy. So I remember uh, one GB pen drives used to come at some thousand rupees some uh, eight nine years ago. Okay, but that is not the case now. So the hardware costs the computer accessibility has become very cheap now and it has become very easy. So companies are able to store the data easily and are able to transfer the data easily. So this is another reason why analytics has become the buzzword now. Okay. And uh, um, the other reason is uh, so all the management concepts which companies use to fight with each other to compete with each other they have already exhausted all the methods so all the companies were traditionally using the same management concept okay there was nothing new uh, no company was doing something new which would give them the edge so analytics became that concept which started giving companies the edge and later we will see why Facebook why Amazon uh, why GE are so ahead of their rivals because they have utilized data to uh, give them the best basically okay and another example that I have given so you guys remember a couple of years ago we had the Maggie fiasco right so uh, some uh, in India Maggie was banned for almost uh, six to eight months uh, because some uh, banned substance was found in Maggie so this uh, this I I think it was it resulted in a loss of almost 300 crores to Maggie to Nestle okay so this was the amount of loss Nestle had to bear because of this Maggie fiasco. 
okay so uh, why this could have controlled is because uh, uh, nestle did not take it seriously and they did not do a good because people were posting about it all throughout facebook uh, throughout the social media throughout they were doing tweets on this but maggie did not did not basically notice all of this so if maggie had a data science team who could do a social media analytics who could do a text mining and give them the right trend they could have controlled it while it was small they did not do it for whatever reasons uh, it is uh, and that resulted in a loss of almost 300 crores so this is the direct losses to nestle because of that and and there were a lot of indirect losses also because even even after the government cleared the next samples of maggie still people were afraid to consume it okay so those were the indirect losses so uh, we we can see the importance of analytics in this slide okay so let's move ahead Okay, so this is a very uh, traditional slide. So the three V's of analytics, they are very famous. So we already discussed about it. So first V is for volume. So the, amount, the volume of data that is available has increased drastically. So it has multiplied manifold in the past few years. So we need we need uh, to basically analyze the data because data is nothing but information. So when you go to a restaurant and you like the food, you basically give it a higher rating on, on Zomato or Swiggy or whichever website or on Facebook you just mentioned about the restaurant so this is this is information which can be used so if this information let's say if 10 other people read this information they they would also be encouraged to come to that restaurant right so how could companies benefit from this information so imagine the volume of data that is available so uh, imagine the number of tweets going every hour the number of Facebook posts coming and this also includes the unstructured data for example videos getting uploaded on Facebook on YouTube uh, the Twitter videos coming out uh, nowadays we have whatsapp as well. So imagine the amount of data. Okay, and the second V is for variety So variety because again uh, you have data in different formats you have structured data for example data that is in your SQL databases or your Excel spreadsheets or you also have unstructured data so the email that you write is unstructured it doesn't have specific rows and columns uh, the videos that we see audio files all these are unstructured data and the third v is for velocity so the velocity at which the data is coming so you can imagine the number of tweets coming every second okay so this this web this slide is old uh, it is no longer true so this this used to be the case some three years ago but uh, now it has uh, i think it has multiplied almost 10 times now okay So this is where we stand now. Okay, so people working in business intelligence would would relate better to this slide. So initially, uh, five years ago or ten years ago, uh, when, when uh, a lot of people started using in, uh, internet, so this is how we have progressed. So we used to prepare standard reports, uh, let's say ten years uh, ago. So from the standard reports, it came. We we went to the online analytical processing stage. So an example of this would be, let's say, some you you withdraw money from your account, and uh, the moment you do that, uh, you get a message, right? You get a SMS saying that this much money has been. Uh, withdrawn from your account so this is like a like a trigger okay so yeah an, an event uh, triggers another event okay so this this comes under online analytical processing then we move now we have come to a stage where we are doing predictive analytics okay so this is this is where we are now okay one sec so this is where we stand now okay so inferential statistics uh, the example which I gave you where you study a sample and then you uh, basically infer for the population so for example you ask uh, 30 uh, you ask some hundred people about their incomes and then you generalize it over the entire population so that is the inferential statistics part data mining and predictive analytics it involves uh, whatever data scientists do basically so this involves building the models and then predicting the future okay so the models will be mathematical models we will see this later in the later slides and the next step of this is monte carlo simulation and optimization so monte carlo simulation basically refers to uh, the what if scenario so for example um, let's say uh, a company invests one crore in marketing and uh, as a result of this their sales is let's say 50 crores 
now if the company invests two crores in marketing what would their sales be given all the other scenarios okay so those what if scenarios come under monte carlo simulation okay and optimization also is is very interesting so optimization for example um, when you book a uber cab right or, or when you see google map you would see a particular route or the uber driver would take you through a particular route so how how does uber or how does google decide which route is the best so a lot of optimization goes here so uber decides this based on the the distance first and not only on the distance it also decides based on the traffic so if, if a route if a route is shorter but it has more traffic then uber would not suggest you that route okay so uh, based on the time taken for a route okay and uh, let's say when you book a cab and there are five cab drivers around you so which cab driver would get the request so that is also decided based on optimization okay so uh, no, it is not random selection of a cab driver if you book a cab okay so, so but there are many many ways this can be done so i have had a student from uber so he he was mentioning some of the reasons so how uber does this is first is one 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 point is based on the ratings so based on the ratings of the drivers so if if a uber driver has higher rating he is more likely to get the request from the customer okay and uh, another another thing is uber also tries to maximize the income of all drivers not just one driver so if every time the the driver with the highest rating gets the request he will start earning a lot and the other uber drivers will not earn that much so what will happen they will be discouraged and they will eventually come out of uber they will move to ola or some other uh, cab services so to discourage this what uber does is if let's say for example a driver has already taken five rides since morning okay and there is another driver who has taken only two rides and if you send a request and both the drivers are uh, around the same place then the second driver would get the request because he has taken fewer rides since morning okay so that that comes under the optimization part uh, okay so funny is asking please plug the charger okay i'll just plug the charger is it better now i forgot to turn on turn on the charger basically let me increase the brightness also how do we increase the brightness Yeah, I think this should be okay. Okay, so uh, I think it is cool now. Okay, so any any questions so far guys? Okay, great. Okay, so Sabarna asks me, can you elaborate on Monte Carlo simulation? Sabarna, this is a very beginner's class. So, and and I, my, I am myself. I have myself not worked a lot on Monte Carlo simulation. Okay, I have just done it once. So you can do Monte Carlo simulation on Excel also. So I have done it on Excel long ago. So I don't remember exactly, honestly. So, but but this is this is where it is used. Okay, whenever you have a what if scenario, when let's say a lot of events are related to each other. Okay, let's say uh, you increase the expenditure, uh, you increase the uh, marketing budget uh, as a result of which the sales also increases. But uh, when you increase your marketing budget, your rivals may also increase their marketing budgets. So you build a model where which takes care of all of this stuff. Okay, and then you start simulating. Uh, simulating uh, by simulating, I mean, and then you start changing your marketing budget. Okay. So you start changing and then you see 
that let's say if you change it from one crore to two crore how is your sales affecting being affected is it increasing or is it decreasing or, or is your expenditures increasing too much so so many events when they are related and uh, you have to control one then how is your outcome varying because of that that can be basically caught using monte carlo simulation okay okay so lakshmi pati uh, ask is asking where does hypothesis testing fits in this uh, continuum so uh, that that is a part of uh, data mining you can say so hypothesis testing or any other statistical concept will come under these three okay this is where all the statistics will come so we will see later so hypothesis testing is again advanced concept which i would not be going in this beginner slide i i i do that when i'm taking a full-fledged course but yeah whenever you build a model there are some hypotheses for each model you make an assumption and then you build a model okay so that is uh, model specific so we are not going into that in this session it's a, it's a beginner session okay okay so i have already explained this slide so just just one thing uh, on the right hand side what you see uh, that is something which you can relate better so what is data analysis so data analysis is uh, whatever so you would uh, you would be doing business intelligence and uh, the normal data analysis so what is the difference between data analysis and data analytics so data analysis is it looks backward over time and and then provides a historical view of what happened so let's say a company wants to know that which are its best customers or or let's say infosys wants to know which are its best employees right so what it would do employee uh, infosys will see, will see basically which employee has worked for the maximum term which employee has had the best appraisals in the past okay and which employee has let's say uh, one uh, uh, maximum number of awards so this entire things will come under data analysis now what is the difference between analysis and analytics okay now analytics what we will do we will see the future we will try to see the future so uh, whatever was the past that comes under data analysis but through analytics we will in fee let's say in fee will try to decide which employees will perform better in the coming quarter okay that is what infosys or any company will decide if they are doing data analytics so that's the difference between analysis and analytics and as analysis looks at the past data and analytics looks at the future so it, anal analytics also looks at the past data but it tries to predict for the future that's the difference so obviously if you cannot look the past you will not be able to predict the future right you will have to look at the past okay so next slide and and this is again uh, the difference between uh, data analysis or online analytical processing so these these were the questions which are typically asked if if you are doing data analysis okay so these kind of questions you will be trying to solve or this kind of problems you will be trying to solve okay so what are the questions so let's say who uh, a, a telecom company wants to know who were its best customers so what it will do it will look at the past data and just find out which customers paid the maximum bills those were the best customers right then next would be which geographic areas did my sales come from so let's say airtel wants to know which which area is doing better so is karnataka circle doing better or let's say which which circle is doing better so that also they could know from the past data then companies want to know how long do the customers stay with the company so again looking at the past data and so on so all these questions can be answered by looking at the past data okay now let us see how the questions change when we move to analytics okay so this is data analysis part let us see the questions which or the problems which we will try to solve as data scientists so if you are doing this in your work you are probably doing data analysis okay and most of most of the companies they are still working on these okay they are still working on these kind of questions so let us see the questions changing when you move to analytics now, now let us see the questions so let me start from the bottom or, or let us see at these these questions which are at the bottom using the so which customers are thinking of leaving right so this is not looking at the past data this is for the future which customers are thinking of leaving so which customers are thinking so a company would want to know which customers are thinking so obviously uh, this would not be easy right because the customers have just started thinking and you have to catch that 
So obviously the models should be very powerful. So that's the, that's how the questions the problems change when you move to analytics which bank transactions or which financial transactions are fraudulent okay so the transactions have been made now you have to identify which of them are fraudulent okay and this is not easy right because obviously a fraudulent transaction will not tell you that it is a fraudulent transaction you will have to find some process wherein you can do so another better application of this is for example antiviruses so antiviruses have also started using a lot of analytics okay so antiviruses they will basically detect uh, which one is a spam or which which one is is a is a threat is a is an anomaly to your uh, uh, to your computer or to your database whatever it is okay which product has the greatest chance of success okay so chance you can again see probability is coming here right so because we will always say with a probability so all these answers will be with a probability So these are the questions through analytics. Okay, let's move ahead now. Okay, now let us move and see uh, a few companies which have which have used analytics or which have been using analytics for a long time or which started using analytics. They were and also see uh, which were the biggest companies. Let's say. 10 years ago or 15 years ago and which which are the biggest giants now so you can see in 2001 so the series in 2001 so these were the biggest companies in 2001 so the biggest was GE then we had Microsoft Exxon Citibank Walmart and now let us come to 2016 so this is the present okay so let me zoom so the, the, the numbers are not important here. You just have to see which companies are the biggest now. Okay. So now look at 2016 and, and see which companies are the biggest. So Apple has become the biggest company now. Then you have Google and then you have Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook. So what is one thing which is common in these companies you would see is all the companies they started using data analytics from a long past so these companies they started using data uh, like almost 10 years or 15 years ago uh, the other companies they have only recently so GE has started using a lot of data analytics now but not not uh, as long as these companies started using or or uh, for example Walmart also does a lot of analytics now but these companies at the bottom the top companies now they were the pioneers of analytics okay so Facebook and and you can see all of these companies have something to like uh, they, they have something to do with the internet, right? So Facebook it's a social media site entirely on the internet Amazon. It's an online e-commerce site Microsoft has online products Google again. It is online Apple though. It is a is a, is a, is a phone company, but they have their own OS and Apple mobiles. They collect a lot of data. So Apple Maps they have its own maps. They don't follow the Google Maps. Okay. They have, they have their own navigation system. So all, almost all of these companies they are internet based companies and they have utilized data a lot and that's one of the reasons why they are at the top now. So this is what differentiates uh, a company which uses data from others which don't. Okay, so let us move ahead. So this is again uh, in which industries is analytics used uh, some of the industries are mentioned here of course this is not exhaustive so there are a lot of other, lot of other industries so analytics can basically be used in anything okay in any domain you can think of analytics can be used so later i'll have some videos also so from the videos you will realize you wouldn't have imagined places where analytics is being used now okay so financial services analytics is being used Retail a lot of analytics is being used. So when you get the coupons from let's say uh, Central or any other store you get those coupons or Flipkart sends you Mintra sends a lot of coupons, right? So they do not send the coupons to everybody they send specific coupons to select customers only So how do they select the customers whom to send coupons? So they do that using analytics I'm not sure how much analytics Mintra is doing but Amazon in the US has uh, is doing a lot Mintra and Flipkart are slowly catching up 
okay manufacturing a lot of analytics is used for supply chain optimization demand forecasting inventory optimization so imagine how many products uh, amazon would have in their warehouse or flipkart would have in their warehouse right so they have they have to optimize the entire route how the how when a product once a product is ordered how how does it get shipped and finally delivered to the customer so they have to optimize the entire supply chain so that it it results in minimum cost to flipkart uh, because as you would know they they hardly charge anything for the delivery right the delivery is mostly free but but that in that would involve a lot of amount of cost right so imagine a product coming from somewhere in new delhi to bangalore so it would come via flight so imagine the cost it would take but they have they have optimized in such a way that they are able to give you the delivery for free without charging anything for the delivery so a lot of analytics is done there transportation again uber does this google does this a lot healthcare philips does this a lot so philips equipments uh, for example uh, those uh, ctc scanners uh, and uh, what what are they called I, i'm not getting the name so the scanner machines that you see which detects brain tumor so those also work on analytics so that that works on, on another field which is known as the image portion of it so image analytics we do there hospitality we do a lot so yatra.com make my trip so uh, how do they vary the prices so if you see yatra.com or or any goibipo their prices are not constant it varies uh, so they also follow the surge pricing theory which uber does okay energy it is used so i remember doing a project where we were trying to find out which windmill part will fail so i did a project at infosys okay so this was where we had we had different windmills so you have a windmill and uh, the, the the there are various parts in a windmill okay and uh, the windmills basically uh, the parts would sometimes break down and when a part breaks down what would happen the windmill will stop functioning so it will stop generating electricity so it will result in a lot of loss for the uh, the owner of the windmill so we, we through data what we try to do is we try to predict if a part will fail down fail or not so even before it fails so that before failing uh, basically the engineers can reach there and repair the part okay then government is doing a lot of analytics nowadays as well okay so any any questions from here from this website or any industry which you work on which you don't see here any domain that you are working but is not present in this slide okay funny asks pharmaceutical a uh, pharmaceutical is one of the like the biggest sectors where analytics is used okay so pharmaceutical uh, healthcare is one of the biggest so uh, i'm not sure if you guys know uh, dj patel so dj patel uh, uh, like i i follow him on linkedin so he 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 is the one who coined the term data science okay so he started this uh, this the terminology of data science and data scientist he was the first chief data scientist of the us government so obama appointed him as the chief data scientist he was working at the white house for the us government and he is a guy of indian origin okay so he was the first data scientist of the entire world you can see so he was in bangalore uh, I, i think couple of months ago and i went to one of his sessions okay so he mentioned that healthcare which is nothing but pharmaceutical and uh, uh, what was that and and networking not networking as uh, networking as in say uh, like uh, data confidentiality okay so these two other sectors we will see the maximum analytics in the coming years this is what he said okay yeah data center networking davidson so this these are the two sectors which will see the maximum analytics in the coming years so this is what he said and healthcare is using a lot of analytics so dna mapping they are doing they are trying to discover new species using analytics or how to to uh, how how what would be the effect of uh, a particular drug on on uh, anybody so all those things is being decided so there is a lot of analytics being done there automotive uh, pradeep uh, automotive does a lot of analytics so uh, maruti can you guys hear me
Guys, can you hear me? Guys, can you hear me? Now, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Now you would be able to hear me, I guess, right? Yeah, sorry, there was a, a voltage fluctuation. So uh, basically the power went off and the generator started. So there is a lag of some 10 seconds. So my router went off. So whenever this happens, please uh, just just hold on. Okay, don't don't exit from the connection. Otherwise, you'll have to connect again. Okay. So yeah, uh, somebody was asking about automotive automotive is doing a lot of analytics So Maruti for example in India specifically Maruti is doing a lot of analytics and a lot of these big companies like Mercedes Audi they do a lot of analytics so For example Audi Porsche these uh, luxury brands They do not advertise a lot. So if, if you would see any of the hoardings that you see besides the road uh, You will never see you will very rarely see advertisement of Audi or, or of these uh, high high luxury cars But you would often see advertisements of Maruti or Hyundai or any other uh, general cars that is because uh, they only uh, So these luxury car car companies they only target specific customers. They don't target the entire uh, uh, all, all the bunch of folks they target specific customers and they do a lot of analytics for that so which customers to target because they have to incur a lot of loss in approaching a in, in, in approaching a potential customer they have to send their marketing team they have to uh, their sales guy will be after that person if he thinks that uh, the the customer would buy a, a mercedes car so they have to incur a lot of cost and they cannot obviously uh, um, run after everybody not everybody will be in a position to buy a mercedes car or they cannot uh, uh, have their sales guy running after everybody otherwise they'll have to big a very big they'll have to take a very big sales team which is not possible okay so that is one place where they are doing a lot of analytics plus mercedes nowadays uh, everybody would realize right uh, these cars they are having a lot of uh, uh, internet based stuff so internet of things has come into picture and they have a lot of sensors so they they are also utilizing this data to do a lot of predictive analytics for example nowadays uh, they are trying to put some sensors in the car uh, so it will basically uh, and they are linking it to a app in the in the car, in the in the owner of the car so the owner of the car would know through the app that is the pressure in the tire okay or not so that uh, that will basically uh, avoid any accidents so these are the places. So uh, what is the pressure of the car at which the customer should go for a, a, a basically a, a change of tires or any any stuff like that. So these things can be determined using analytics. So that is where automotive sector is using analytics. Automotive sector is also using analytics a lot in manufacturing in their supply chain. So for example, most Maruti cars available in India, they are manufactured at their Gurgaon plant. So how, how do they send their cars uh, which are manufactured in Gurgaon to all the place? Let's say uh, down in the south. So obviously uh, the entire supply chain has to be optimized so that they incur the least cost in that So all those things a lot of analytics is being used Okay, okay Now why should we be interested? Why are we doing all of this analytics obviously because Okay, so Prabhjot has a question here. How do we know verify the analysis is correct? Okay, so yeah, I think somebody else also asked it. How, how do we verify the results? So uh, we will we will see Prabhjot and everybody so when you make a predictions I already mentioned that you make a prediction with a probability right now How will you verify that your prediction is correct or not? So there is a process for this Okay, we will discuss that uh, if, if time permits, but that this is beyond the uh, scope of this particular introduction session. But there are well defined processes wherein you can basically assess whether your model is doing good or not. 
and only then of course we will use it and apply it in the future okay so yeah it is there okay so why should we care we were discussing about it right so obviously because we as Thank you. 